All right, coming up next, it's a bantamweight clash between Henry Cejudo and Aljamain Sterling. Well, always exciting when this guy shows up on the fight card, Daniel. He is a true mixed martial artist. Not really any glaring weaknesses, at least, that he's put on film thus far. He's the new breed of fighter. Those kids that start doing everything at six years old. They start wrestling. They start doing jujitsu. They start to box. He's one of those guys that has every one of those skills, and he does them all at an A-plus level. He's got tremendous cardio. He is the type of fighter that in a few years will just litter the UFC roster across the board. And oftentimes his opponents will say he doesn't really do anything special, but he does everything at a plus level, and he believes he'll have a lot of advantages in this matchup tonight. The Olympic gold medalist, UFC flyweight champion, and again, you talk about work ethic. That conversation begins with the messenger, Henry Cejudo. It absolutely does. As a young boy, Henry understood that he wanted goals bigger than any high school kid should chase. So he moved to the Olympic Training Center, and he trained with me as I was getting ready for the Olympic team prior as a little kid because he knew winning an NCAA title wasn't enough for him. Ultimately, he became Olympic champion, the youngest in U.S. history, and now he's the UFC champion. What a career by Henry Cejudo. Our tail of the tape for this, our main event of the evening. Cejudo is two years the elder. Sterling will have a seven-inch reach advantage. Here's Bruce Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event of the evening. And when the action begins, our referee in charge, Herb Dean. And now, this is the moment UFC fans around the world have been waiting for. Live from the T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas, it's time! Five rounds in the UFC Bantamweight Division. Introducing first, Fighter. This man is a mixed martial artist, holding a professional record of 19 wins, three losses. He stands five feet seven inches tall, weighing in at 135 pounds, fighting out of Uniondale, New York, Al Jermaine Funkmaster Sterling. And now introducing his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. This man is a Greco-Roman wrestler, holding a professional record of 16 wins, two losses. He stands five feet four inches tall, weighing in at 135 pounds, fighting out of Phoenix, Arizona, Henry the Messenger Zahudo! You've been giving your instructions in the dressing room. Protect yourself at all times. Follow my instructions. We will have a clean fight. Touch gloves is making fun. When he changes that level, he is going to be shooting into a guy that truly understands all aspects of mixed martial arts. I'm wondering how, if his first shot doesn't work, does he approach trying to get this fight to the ground? Well, perhaps a sign of things to come as he lands a kick there. Nice kick landed by the jump. Real quick leg kick. Lands a big elbow there. Oh! All right, here we go. 
first round is underway. No denying the big reach advantage for him tonight. We'll see if he can get that jab going early. Look for him to circle on the outside. Use that long jab to keep his distance and only engage on his terms. Trying to establish that jab once again. Beautiful punch. Single collar tie now. Well, the right hand has been there at times, not that time. Try to further expose what surfaced tonight as an obvious weakness. And just inches away from landing one of those big right hands. Oh, beautifully placed with the hook there by Cejudo. He continues to evolve as a striker. And just misses with that big right hand. Sterling's punch to the body, that one is blocked. Big ball punch land. Now he gets back to range. Look at him drive his shin into his opponent's body with that body. So just over 20 total strikes, as you see there, have landed for Aljamain Sterling. All right, he engages in a single collar tie here. Big liver kick lands under the elbow. Two minutes to go in the round. Just missed with the elbow there. He's got a serious right punch, and he went to it effectively there. It is his money shot, and he will continue to throw it until he finds a knockout. He has a commitment to kick it tonight, and it shows. Ninety seconds now to go in round one. Right hand lands flush for Sterling. He's throwing every part of himself into these big leg kicks. A lot of different looks. He switches to southpaw now. Nice head kick. those leg kicks. Look at him whip his hip into that kick. All right, he engages in a single collar tie. Just missed with the left there. All right, single collar tie now. Big punch man for the middle. Well, we talked about his reach advantage off the top. Made good use of it there with that punch, DC. Oh. Round two next. Oh. Let's take a look back at some of the replays, DC, and if you like the kicking game, that was the round for you. Yeah, man, he used his kicks beautifully. He managed distance, managed space, and eventually those kicks started to really take an effect on his opponent and slow him down. He has to stay the course next round. All right, here we go as our next round gets underway. His strong leg packs so much power that even when he doesn't throw it full throttle, you see he's able to inflict damage. We'll see if he can keep it going here in this He round. doesn't throw it full power, but even when he faints it, he draws out reactions 
from his opponents because they don't want to get hit with any more of those kicks. It's a sight to behold. Good series of punches by him there. He has certainly had no trouble finding the range tonight. He is finding the target with everything he throws. He's mixing it up beautifully. Missed with that right hand. What a tricky head kick. Starting to do some really significant damage to the body here. Another strike lands there. Just unable to quite find that range. Nice body kick right under the elbow. Well, the stats producer's been busy tonight, DC. 49 total strikes have landed for Aljamain Sterling. And just 42% accuracy in terms of the land rate against Henry Sahut. Big knee there. The Olympic gold medalist Sahuto gets hit with a kick. Man, look at him load up on that right. All right, well, he's landed some good shots tonight, but there's no three-piece, there's no soda. More often than not, it's one and done. He's not even getting a combination. I mean, hey. if you're going to sit there at the drive-thru, <laughs> order a combination, take the soda with your food, give him the right hand behind the jab, give him the hook behind the right hand. Jab, right hand, hook, that's two pieces of chicken and a biscuit. Finish him off with the uppercut. That is your soda. I mean, come on, man. Let this guy have the whole thing. Well, as my favorite rap group Onyx would say, stick and move, right? Huh. Beautiful slip off the center line there. Yeah, what a great job of moving his head. It doesn't take much to avoid a punch. Big right hook coming. It's blocked. Well, you got to be careful getting into this type of grappling situation, DC, with Aljamain Sterling. Hardy right, closes the distance, gets the single collar tie. Oh, nice job by him there to slip that offer. Man, as he landed a high volume of strikes here in round two, definitely picking up the pace after round one. So he got the message from the corner, and now he is taking control of this second round. Over and over, he's landed these big body kicks. Looking for the counter right now, no good. Head off the center line, slips the punch. Way to hide that leg kick. Well, the body work starting to take its toll. Look at the redness starting to appear on his left side. Oh, beautiful jab by him there, really taking advantage of what is an obvious edge and reach. Oh, that's a good strike there by Sterling. Oh, collar tie. Leg kick checked nicely by Sterling. Oh, beautiful jab there, man. It's like you know what's coming, can't stop it. I mean, you have to anticipate that jab coming or he will batter and bruise you with that single strike. And he continues to work the body here. Under a minute now to go in this one. Able to check that kick as well. Oh, he eats a knee there. That does not taste good. Oh, and he connects with a punch there, DC. You gotta like what you're seeing this. I mean, the speed at which he throws is crazy. Cable inches right there, boy. Wow. It was good night if that landed. Both fighters throwing heat now. Oh, he has landed a high volume of strikes in this round and really hasn't let up when it comes to his aggressiveness. The striking has been on point every step of the way. Careful to not gas out, but you gotta like the output here down the stretch. And the horn sounds on round two.
right, that horn signifies the end of the round. Let's take us through some replays, champ. And the replays are gonna be kicks. That's the story of this fight to this point. He is landing these kicks at will, just driving his shin into his opponent's legs, and it's really starting to slow him down. All right, here we go, DC. Our next round is underway, and he's chasing some punch stat records tonight. That was some serious volume and efficiency in the previous round. Normally, you see that in boxing, where a guy just throws so many strikes. But this man has taken it to the octagon, looking to break all the punch records before the night is over. Well, he hasn't really showed any signs of slowing down tonight. He continues to connect on a high volume of strikes here. That's a big strike right there. Nice knee to the midsection there. Well, Sterling comfortable wherever the fight goes, but you're seeing a lot of the improvements he's made in his stand-up under Ray Longo, and at least early on in this one, more than content to strike. Connects with the right. And he landed the right hand there. Well, the numbers are unofficial, but they are strong. 97 total strikes, as you see there, have landed for Aljamain Sterling. Just below 50% now in terms of the accuracy rate, landing 46% tonight against Henry Cejudo. Oh, really making good use of his reach advantage as he lands the straight punch line. Man, is he timing his shots well here tonight, DC. It's hard to recall him being this accurate in the past. I mean, he is so sharp. And not only is he accurate, he's also keeping very busy. Oh, single collar tie here. Oh, big head kick. Oh, wow! Head kick. Knee to the body. Oh, an educated jab there. I could watch this dude jab all day. I mean, he's so light on his feet, and when he pops that jab, it comes right back to his face. Oh, he hurt him bad with the jab. Look at the whip action that comes from him throwing that kick. Flush right hand is true. Just out of range with the big right hand. Nice punch lands. Look at the control in the posture as that big knee lands. Oh! And this might just be a matter of time. Cejudo's looking to pass here, denied by the opponent. Well, you know he's comfortable fighting off his back. Well, as usual, suffocating work from the top here by Cejudo. All right, half guard now. Not a fighter you want in half guard against you. For the bottom fighter, what does he need to do? He needs to secure his underhook. He's got to be fighting, fighting, fighting for underhook. One of the most key things you can do as a bottom fighter stuck in half guard is try to frame. You frame and push your opponent away from you. By pushing him away from you, he will then want to come back into you. Right. It's like when I push you back, you want to go forward. So as he comes forward, hand goes off the face, let it slip into an underhook, build up to your elbow, then go chase your single leg. This is high-level grappling, John, from a Brazilian jiu-jitsu black belt named Daniel Cormier. <laughs> High-level MMA defense there, able to avoid the punch. Nice job by Cejudo. Got the single collar tie. Well, this is exactly the sense of urgency you're looking for. Try to take the judges out of it. He is lighting them up now. Nice sneaky head kick. Short time now on the run. Caught the kick. And they separate. As he gets close, he's out of the kicking range. He'll suddenly he'll change his stance. Nice punch land over the top. Sterling's lower jaw does not look good. I don't think it's broken, but starting to show some obvious signs of swell. Now connects with a right. Twenty 
seconds left. Oh, looking to land the leg kick, but unable to find the target. with a punch there. It's hard to recall a time in the past that this boxing looked this sharp. He's never looked this good. All right, so we now look back at some of the action from that previous round, DC. A lot of good highlights on both sides. I mean, a lot of good highlights from both competitors. They both should be very proud of what they accomplished. But I'm telling you, man, I'm not sure they can keep this up. If they land at this clip for another five minutes, somebody's going to sleep. All right, next round is now underway. Previous round, not necessarily a tough act to follow. Pretty good, not great. Pretty good rounds, but not the best round. Sometimes that's what you get when you have fighters that are so evenly matched. Oh, man, that's a nice kick right there. He's doing a great job of landing that kick over and over again. Blocks the shot. Just misses there with the left. Well, most fighters can't keep up this type of aggression and pace, but you don't have to worry about this guy. He hasn't really showed any signs of slowing down tonight. Big punch lands over the top. How's he gonna follow this one? It got defended, but it will give Henry the idea that takedown may be coming. Nice leg kick. So Hudo gets hit with a kick here. Let's see how he responds. Big head kick lands. Oh, tags him with the straight. Nice job there by Sterling. Straight punch lands. Both guys really thrown with authority. Look at the torso on the right side. Major bruising, and it's only getting worse. Beautiful head kick. Oh, a little single collar tie there. And they separate. Nice entry directly into the finish. Nice. All right, so a near-perfect entry there, and finally he gets his first takedown of the fight, and they say if at first you don't succeed. Try, try again, was able to get him down. Persistence pays, and that's what we saw with this young man. Over and over, he shot for takedowns, he tried to mix it up, and he got defended. But eventually, he got it done. Now, what does he do with this top control? All right, half guard for him here, and a lot of offensive options, I would think, at his disposal. Oh, he's got a ton of options. He has submission options, but I believe the safest option for him here is going to be to use his grounded pounce. Build a base, posture up, throw big strikes, get back to position, go posture again, throw big strikes, and just really wear him down with a really secure position in half guard. Oh, he's got the ground and pound going now. Crazy accuracy and efficiency with these ground and pound strikes here. And if you're the opponent, you got to intelligently defend or the referee's going to stop the You got to defend. But you can see him now starting to gain posture and the intensity at which he's throwing these ground strikes is starting to improve. It's starting to elevate because he knows that he can get the finish. I love watching this guy move on the ground. Another nice transition there. Such a high-level grappler. You don't see that very often. Under two minutes to go in the round. Man, this is some serious ground and pound. He's trying to put this dude's head like through the canvas. He's one of the better ground and pound fighters we have in the entire UFC, and you're seeing why. Pretty good work with the ground and pound here by the ever improved Henry Cejudo. He's putting him in exactly the positions he needs to be in right now. He's able to relax here, and he understands being a veteran of so many fights that as long as he's on top, he's winning. He feels like he's winning here. Well, the ground and pound has been on point tonight. Good work here by Cejudo. Well, not good body language from his opponent here, DC. He's curled up. No, he's exhausted. He's been beaten. A lot of top pressure being applied here as he works out of side control. Stay tight, stay tight. Final minute. Go 
Sterling's lower jaw looking extremely swollen now. Man, this is some serious ground and pound here, DC. He's not just staying busy for the sake of staying busy. These strikes are doing damage. Oh, yeah, no pity pat to this guy. Ah. This guy's trying to land, and he's trying to land effective strikes. Twenty seconds now remain in the round. Fighter trying to pass here, Uba gets denied. Gets denied, great job, great recognition of seeing what your opponent was trying to do. Horn sounds for the end of round four. All right, now we take a look back at some of the highlights he has had his kicking game going early and often tonight. I mean, on point, right? He knew that this was gonna be a way for him to take control of this fight. He's used those kicks to really put him out ahead and I'm not sure if his opponent has the ability to adjust and stop him from landing these over and over. All right, another round is now underway. Pretty good previous two rounds. We'll see who makes the requisite adjustments now. The adjustments are going to be the key, John. When you're doing everything you're trained to do and it stays this close, you got to really switch it up. What corner was able to relay that message to their fighter Better the so Hudo gets caught with that punch. He's treading water now. Got to find a way to move those feet. Single collar tie now. He gets to his spot, the tie clinch. Then he starts to let the knees fly. Watch knees to the body. Oh, big head kick land. Cejudo's torso, specifically that right side, has absorbed a lot of damage tonight. And here comes the purple, the black, and blue. A definite blue starting to form on that right side. Well, you didn't see a lot of the body work from him in the earlier rounds, but he's certainly getting after it here. Big shot to the body connects there. We'll see if he can follow it up. Cejudo's got the tie clinch. Let's see what he can do with it. Look at the control of the posture as they land that knee. Nice punch here. Barely missed on an uppercut right here on the inside. Lifts that left hand. And once again, looking for that highlight reel KO with that front kick. Let's get those hands going now. Just over three minutes now to go in the fight. The Olympic gold medalist, Cejudo, gets touched by that kick right to the body there. Nicely done by the opponent. And he connects there with a punch, so pretty good striking display by him thus far. He throws everything so straight and so accurate. He's just being more aggressive, and because he's being more aggressive and more loose with his strikes, he's landing. Splits the guard, lands the right hand. Tags him with the left. So a combination of knees here. You don't see this all the time where a fighter will, will throw multiple knees, but if it's not broken, they'll fix it. There's no takedown threat. If there was a takedown threat, he would not be throwing so many knees. But there's no threat of getting taken down, so he is just letting those knees fly. All right, so he's landed some good shots. You hate to be overly critical, but nothing really in terms of combinations tonight. Well, the jab has been looking great. How about jab, jab, right hand? Right. Because eventually you're going to have to put something on your opponent that's going to really make him pause. I believe the jab has been working so well, if he drops a big right hand after it, he may be able to finish his fight. Punch over the top. Again, he's looking for that left. It's not there. Well, he put so much stock into this fight, and now we're late in the game, and if he doesn't get a finish, this opportunity goes by the board. I mean, it's almost over. Right now, he's got to start throwing everything he can find at his opponent and hope 
that he can force a mistake and overwhelm his opponent to try to get a finish. Whoa! He's in trouble. He's hurt bad. All right, some really grueling work here in the clinch. Both fighters really struggling to gain a dominant position. That happens whenever you understand the position. Both know exactly what they need to do. And when both fighters are trying to do the same thing, it's very, very difficult to get the desired result. Oh, nice jab by him there. And I guess on the other side, hard to get your offense going when your head keeps getting snapped back like a Pez dispenser. Every time he tries to go forward, and use his own offense, the jab is stopping him in his tracks. He's doing a great job of fighting behind him. All right, 20 seconds to go in the rounds. And he connects with a punch there. We'll see if he can follow it up. He's landed that punch over and over again. What's he gonna do to follow up? Final seconds of this fight. All right, he engages in a single collar tie here. Oh, tags him with the left. That is an educated left hand. Educated left hand. He's throwing it so fast and so crisp. What a fight! All right, the official decision is in. It resides with the venerable Bruce Buffett. Ladies and gentlemen, after five rounds, we go to the judges' scorecards for a decision. For the winner by majority decision. All right, so you don't see that every day, DC. Majority decision. So two judges had it for him. The other had it a draw. Two out of three, good enough. But it just tells you how close this fight was, right? It was so close that the third judge didn't want to award it to the opponent but he saw them as even. So this is a very close fight. He should be proud of what he accomplished tonight.